Welcome to the Road to MCP Elastic mini-series. In the previous episode, we've introduced agentic workflows and we've seen how these agents can call on various tools by themselves to create complex conversational agents. Today's episode, we're finally introducing Model Context Protocol. This will allow us to standardize the way that these agents are defined, from servers to tools to the way we prompt them, and allow for agent-to-agent -agent communication, tool definition, and much more. Let's dive in. So the more and more actions we would want to run, the more it could be that we're not creating all these functions ourselves and defining them with our own API specifications. So in the case of the search, we're defining how to find an index, how to run a query, and how to get the results back and how to display them. But we can create the set of steps for a lot of different other tools and services. Now, as you can probably imagine, you wouldn't implement all these from scratch, but plenty of providers that are now adopting agentic processes are creating their own tools. Can we make sure that all these tools, however, work together? And that's where MCP comes in. MCP, Model Context Protocol, does pretty much what the name says, provides the right context to your models and defines a protocol that is uniform and allows you to create compatible various agents or various tooling that should be able to all work together seamlessly. It's been described as the USB-C uh, connector to a bunch of agentic world um, models or providers. So it allows you to have a standardized way of using other people's tools, other people's agents in a sort of marketplace. So if we look at what we've discussed before, we can still use semantic search as a function, but we can define the way an agent can perform semantic search with the MCP standard, allowing us to give any agent the capability to perform this search or to perform RAG basically by retrieving information and using that for gener generating an answer, but using the same standard so that if another provider has a really good tool for checking flights, uh, you can also use the tool from the MCP marketplace and inter introduce it into the same architecture. So what we're seeing is that a lot of different providers are creating MCP servers, such as the Elastic server, that would then allow you to perform various actions with a set of functions and tools that have been defined with the same protocol so they can easily work together. This allows you to work with a lot of different data sets without having to define how to connect to those data sources, how to run searches or how to get data from them, how to interact with them, where to put the results. Each of these should be defined with the same MCP standard so that through a few calls made by your agents, all the data should be collected together. This allows for some really complex and interesting applications. Uh, using different tools from the marketplace and interacting with different data from data on your Garmin to data from various public applications or websites that you can search through and combine and create these really insightful AI assistants that know the data sources that you give them access to and can evolve over time. So if you see a new function, a new data source or a new action that you want your agent to take, if it's defined with the same MCP protocol, you can just add that server into your application and you should be able to grow the capabilities of your agent. And lastly, you should also be able to have different agents communicating together if they use the same protocol. So you can define an agent that does your travel booking, a different agent can manage your agenda, but they can work together to make sure that you have a time slot available or another agent can summarize and send emails for you. All of these agents can and should be able to work together, or you can have a different strategy of having one master agent that does everything. But as we've tried to mention at every stage, there's of course a lot of fine tuning that you can do and different strategies work for different approaches. The important thing is that you have the flexibility to choose. And let's use our graphics breakdown one final time. We're going to go over the same example that we've also addressed in a blog and video before, and you'll see this linked in the resources below along with our other supporting documents. This showcases the MCP architecture that relies on the client and server pillar. The client, of course, refers to the user interface you're interacting with, in most cases, a chatbot of some kind, and the server is the one where we define all the tools and prompts and resources that can be called into action when the agent determines that they are needed. In this case, the user interface or the client was Claude, which is a popular chatbot. 
and we were able to call in the Elasticsearch server, allowing us to have a very simple text request that then brings us back the result of a complex query. At the surface level, this just looks like user makes request, MCP client comes back with a list. But what happens behind the scene is a little bit more complex than that. First, we're calling out to an LLM that allows us to determine what the user actually wants by breaking down the prompt, then getting this back to the client. The client can decide, okay, this is an Elasticsearch problem, so we're going to call out the Elasticsearch server and take it away from here. The server then makes various calls through Elasticsearch with the tools that we've defined, such as finding the available indexes and determining that I need to look at orders, figuring out the mapping of this index, which then allows us to build the query with the filters that we've requested, orders over $500 the past month. So from here, we can also use an LLM to further determine what that JSON request will look like. So we can build out the complex Elasticsearch query, get all these responses back and use a generative model to put it into a nice answer. So then the complexity is hidden away and the agent determines which steps to take by itself. The user just gets the response back in a very neat way. So let's look back at the example we mentioned in the beginning and see how we understand it now. If you want an AI assistant to just do something for you, you have to have an agent that is able to run tools and commands for you. Part of these commands is probably going to be some form of retrieval. So you're going to have a defined way of connecting to an elastic cluster, running a query on an index, a query that you're able to generate yourself with an LLM. You get back documents that are relevant. You retrieve them. You get the specific passages that you want. An LLM with generative capabilities can create an answer based on the information that you've gotten back. You can run various other tools to connect to other data sources, check public websites through APIs, collect information from private data, public data, run other commands to get information together, and then put that all into the answer that is provided to you. And if you have the agentic workflow, you're also able to go back and forth and ask questions have history of the conversations you've had and are able to ask about things that you've discussed previously. So the agentic workflow allows you to go back and forth and automatically trigger other commands and have the agent take initiative. And if you want to combine this with other tools and other agents, using a protocol like MCP would also be useful because then everyone can communicate the same language. So you don't need to, from scratch, uh, define all the ways that the agent should connect to a particular database or run a command or ask a question to another agent and process the response. So that is how you can use LLMs, RAG, Agentic, uh, and MCP all together to just create a really useful tool that can automate a lot of tasks for you and very quickly process information from multiple data sources into one. Hopefully that gives you a pretty clear picture of all these acronyms and where they fit in. If you want to go more in depth in the description below, I will link a lot of articles from our Search Labs blogs that go into more in depth on the various techniques I've mentioned, as well as some of the example I've given. So you can give a read to that, try some GitHub uh, examples by yourself and build an application to test all these concepts out. Hope this was helpful and we'll see you in the next video.